just seen on the map, COVID-19 numbers are rising in parts of the country. So to discuss this matter further, as well as what measures should be put in place to mitigate the impact of a possible third wave, I'm joined now by public health physician at the Northwest University's Health Science Faculty, Professor Andrew Robinson. Prof, thanks a lot for joining us uh, this uh, evening. We're seeing that numbers are on the 4,000 every single day. Well, recently, really, when it comes to the number of infections, is it now the time to make a call, particularly on on the way in which we've been gathering, as well as perhaps looking at implementing more stringent regulations so we can contain now the increasing infections. Uh, good evening, uh, Faith. Good evening, viewers. Thanks for the, uh, the opportunity to uh, try and contribute to this difficult question. Um, yes, the, uh, the numbers are rising, and with the cold weather in, uh, approaching, it's likely that uh, the COVID-19 numbers are going to increase, and uh, the uh, restrict the restrictions. I think are a little bit. Uh, the restrictions should have happened a long time ago. It's a little bit late to uh, curb restrictions, except on possibly on big gatherings. Um, movement of people, I think, is uh, within the country is is not uh, won't have that great an impact uh, because it's so uh, the community transmission is so uh, embedded. But um, my um, uh, as a public health physician, and it's quite difficult to to have uh, open discourse during the time of COVID because. If, you, if one doesn't uh, uh, necessarily agree with, with the way the, the pandemic has been managed, it's very difficult to have a voice. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so sorry that in March 2020, when the pandemic started, that um, really good health um, promotion uh, was, was, was done. I spoke just a couple of days ago with uh, Dr. Beth Engelbrecht, who was the past... Uh, head of the Western Cape Department of Health, and they'd identified a group of, of uh, diabetics with HbA1cs, which were, um, indicated that their diabetes was unstable, and they took them to the field hospital and did a health promotion intervention, and the mortality following that intervention dropped from over 28% to under 4%. So, um, in, in my view, uh, it's far more important uh, to concentrate on who is most, who who are the most vulnerable, yeah. and the most vulnerable are those people who are overweight, obese, and who have got diabetes. And if we look at at, at the mortality rates, uh, uh, the COVID mortality rates within South Africa, starting with children, right into old age, uh, that the obese diabetic uh, component is the has the highest mortality. Mm -hmm. And within children, it's a smaller group. There's uh, TB and HIV within that group. And you go into older and older age, and that group uh, in the uh, 60s, 70s, 80s gets to 80, 90 percent. And, it's, and uh, it's, uh, public health has been silent on, on uh, who is really at risk. Yeah. Then on that children note, Prof, not, not uh, uh, as you're speaking children about... yeah. Well, as you're speaking uh, about how children not are, not, risk, are not at risk, Professor, just for the sake of time, as you speak about how children are not at risk, um, as you're speaking about the comorbidities that are associated with people, so for example, diabetes, yes. obesity and the like, should we now be focusing on vaccinating those people with the comorbidities, those people with diabetes or obesity, so that you can, we can speak to Absolutely. the increase in 100%. mortality? That's, that's where the focus should have been right in the beginning. Uh, uh, vaccinating uh, younger age groups with no comorbidities is a waste of, of money, huge waste of money, huge waste of effort. Uh, we still are, are learning about uh, these vaccines, many of them, which have never been used in humans before. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's so important to, to protect those people who are, who are most at risk. Mm. And those are the obese diabetic ones who need firstly to urgently get uh, start taking their, their um, condition seriously and with support I'm not um, it, it's it's so difficult to to get decent health promotion uh, w um, 
uh, care. And there are certain uh, examples of really good uh, health promotion and care. And I mentioned earlier the mortality reduction uh, with just one intervention. And you might have seen, uh, it, it was in the media previously, uh, I, uh, as, as part of the Physicians Association of Nutrition in South Africa, partnered with an NGO, Ubuntu Trust, yeah. and the Honorable uh, Premier of the Western Cape, and someone from the informal settlement, uh, Pearl Mpange, for 21 days changed their diet. Mm. And both of them are diabetics, and both of them got off their, off their diabetic treatment. Yeah. I mean, how powerful is that? And peop I heard the, on the Honorable President talking about this deadly virus. Now, we need to understand uh, uh, a virus that we, we will never defeat a virus. Mm. And I'll tell you why. The reason is viruses existed on Earth long before humans did. There are so many viruses around us, inside our bodies, yeah. in the Earth, in the air, and in the sea. And then to think we can defend ourselves against uh, one virus which has been with humans for, for centuries. The COVID virus has been with human beings for hundreds of I think they've documented over 700 years mm. of COVID virus infections with humans. Apologies, Professor Andrew, just um, to interject there for a little bit, just for the sake of time. At this stage, yeah. as you're looking at the I'll mortality rate in the sorry, rate, uh, um, yeah. would you say that a lockdown should be the direction we're heading? We should look at Definitely potentially not. locking Definitely down the country, not. not locking down the country. What should we be doing? Definitely not. Focus the protection on those who are most at risk. Identify them, look, uh, look for them, care for them better. They need, they need health care. Those are the ones that are, that are most at risk. Um, and uh, I know that uh, with the wave coming, there is high mortality, but the biggest effort and uh, um, health care workers, those health care workers that are at risk, those mm -hmm. obese health workers, those health workers with, with diabetes, make sure, and uh, I don't know if the public understands, the vaccination only helps you against severe disease. It doesn't prevent you from infection. So definitely the, the, the um, physical distancing yeah. and, and the hand washing remain very important. Prof, we have but, to leave it there for uh, this evening. Uh, thank you so much for your insights. As you said, valuable insights there saying that maybe we should look at the way we're vaccinating public health physician at the Northwest University's Health Science Faculty, Professor Andrew Robinson.